Hey again guys and welcome back. A little bit of a different angle today because we are taking a look at this soldering hot plate provided by banggood.com for review. Um, you're on this angle because all the controls are on the front which makes sense for a production piece of equipment like this. Um, but before I turn it on and show you guys how it works, I feel like it's good time to take it apart while it's cold. We're going to check the grounding in this. We're going to check how it does its thing. I don't suspect there's going to be a whole lot of complexity in here, but I guess we'll find out together. First thing we're going to do, and first thing you should probably do when you have a uh, exposed metal case, is check the grounding situation. So just put your multimeter in continuity mode. Okay, I think you can hear that. And then uh, hold this to the ground pin and just probe kind of everywhere. See, that's a bit disconcerting. That is not grounded. The screws in the feet here are, let's see if the threads, no, this bottom plate here doesn't seem to be grounded at all. That's not good. All right, let's check here on the side, these little posts. That's not grounded. Is this metal case grounded? So it seems like this piece is grounded, but the bottom piece is not. How about the top piece, which are more likable, liable to touch? That's grounded. And I'm going to poke through the metal here. Yeah. So everything's grounded but this bottom piece here. And that's a little disconcerting because you do have some exposed metal. So let's try one of these pins. Nope. Let's try the other pin. Nope. So I think I would uh, add another ground lug here. We'll see if we can add that later on. But I think that's an oversight. This should be grounded. So I'm just going to prove to you that it's unplugged there by removing the IEC cable, uh, which is quite nice actually. I do prefer devices that give me an IEC cable uh, plug instead of just a, you know, a hard wire going through there. Uh, tons of things could happen to your plugs. I mean, you can pinch them in a doorway or whatever it is, and it's nice to be able to just replace the wiring instead, or the, the cable instead of the wiring. So I don't know what these two things are. Let's see here. Okay, so that's a transformer. Wow, there is uh, nothing much to see here. Uh, so wiring coming in, you see the ground wire there, so that's good. That's all grounded, but there should be an extra wire coming up to this plate here. You know, they could have easily put it on this screw right there. A tiny little transformer, 110 volts. They also could have put heat shrink on these connections here. I don't know if they're, I don't know if they're crimped too tightly or whatever. But yeah, they're, so the, the IEC in here, take a look at there. So down here we got the ground, and we got the live and neutral. Looks like one of them is going through a fuse. We're going to have to check see if there's a fuse. There probably is. And then here, this kind of wire here, this kind of this kind of chewy red stuff. That's a heat-proof wire, and I see there's crimps in here. That's not too bad. Hmm. That control board might have to come out for us to take a better look. But looks like all the live, live and neutral are both switched. Go in on this plug. They go into this uh, transformer and then back out onto the control board here. Control board, board looks really simple. And these four screws seem to hold the hot plate on. So let's see, maybe I can just remove these two screws. Get this one free. I think I really would like to add a ground to this base here. So there's the transformer, I can take this one away. I wonder if the transformer was meant to be put here or that's another ground screw up to the transformer. Take a quick look at this control board. Mm, 
Okay. Not much to it. So that is an HT 46 R 23 on that chip. You got the three little tack buttons there, the calibrator here, a little bit of a, well, it's probably, it's a heat sink, but it's also a mounting bracket. And over here we got one, one uh, solid state device. This is probably a triac to switch the, uh, the 110 volts. Then it looks like we've got four wires. We might have four heaters in the in the plate there. That there, again with the high temperature sort of sleeving, that looks like a temperature probe right here. Probably this is an op amp, and there's the uh, there's a, a calibration pot. I'm gonna get the numbers off the triac there. I don't want to bend it too much. Uh, BTA 12-800, might have to look that up. These, uh, these connectors don't look very high current either. That's not great. And I feel like I actually cannot take the top off. Oh, I might be able to. That should be able to go through there. And that should be able to go through there. So let's take a look at the heat plate. I'm just going to loosen the screws. I'll bring you back once it's loose. Got it loose and I got these two plugs unplugged. Let's see if we can slide everything through. This one comes out easy. These crimps might be a little difficult. Well, oh, they're not happy. To me, this part is kind of important, being able to service your unit. Yeah, there we go, it fits. There's a washer, I don't know what it came from. We'll figure that out after. Okay, so here we've got some aluminum pipe as standoffs. Oh boy, these standoffs are screwed in here but maybe they're what's holding the rest of this on. Couldn't be asked to go get my uh, sockets. So let's see what happens here. Ooh, that looks quite nasty. It's weird though, like this looks all like hand drilled holes, but the metal work and stuff looks like it's been made with, uh, you know, like powder coating and stuff, so I don't understand what the deal is here. I'm going to move these through the same way. There we go. Okay, that section is off. And now, so it looks like we've got a temperature probe in the very center of this, um, of this board and then we've got heater cartridges now I don't know if they are just pinched in there oh you know what these are I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because I think I know what these are so I can't be a hundred percent sure but these look like um, heater cartridges for 3d printers I mean all they are a heater cartridge all it is really is uh, like a, a resistance, a specific resistance, and you run a specific voltage to it. No, they're different. Okay. So they are actually, yep, they're the same. I mean, they're the same type of thing, but they're not the exact same thing because a 3D printer one will be about only that long or so. So these are sitting in a machined groove in this uh, relatively thick aluminum plate. Uh, this is easily five, six mils thick. There is no thermal transfer compound, however. That's a kind of unfortunate. But yeah, they're sitting there, like so. And then they're just clamped by this machined piece here, little groove in the middle. 
and they're just clamped down on one side. So th these things are built down to a price, but it's not too bad. And you can see that uh, they also cut in some threads for um, for these uh, standoffs. So they got two standoffs here and a nut down there. I mean, it's not a bad way to do things. It does work. Seems like this plate's not quite centered either. The grooves are go a lot further on one side. It's almost as if they were meant to have sort of one long heater instead of uh, on each side instead of two shorter ones. I'm going to clamp this down. Hopefully these things don't come loose over time. So give them a little bit of a quick spin there, but yeah, that's that's it. Sort of this side's not touching, neither is this side. It's really just held down by those, you know, those single old pair of screws on each side. And there's the standoffs. Oh, you can see these are loose actually. I'm gonna give them a quick tighten too. But as you can see, they just use whatever standoffs. Maybe I'll get that to focus a little bit better. They use whatever standoffs they have. So they have, see this kind of uh, medium length one and a little bit shorter one. And that's the same thing here. But on this side, seem to be different lengths again. So yeah, whatever they had. Uh, this surface is actually fairly flat as well. So that's decent in that regard. Um, these edges, oh boy, they are sharp. So don't cut yourself if you're going to do this. All right, I guess I've seen what I need to see. I'm going to put this all back together and we're going to see if it works. I have it most of the way back together now, um, but if you have one of these, I would strongly recommend that you pull these um, terminals here, these spade terminals, and you put uh, some clear uh, heat shrink over them. Well, any heat shrink, I guess, but I have this clear stuff that I'm probably going to use just to protect in case these come loose. I don't, you don't want them to short on anything. So these and these over there. And I would also add um, another wire to this one, uh, whether you take it from under here or over here, and you put it on the base of this transformer here. I don't think this transformer goes live. Uh, this usually should be grounded, and at the moment it is not grounded. So yeah, uh, I can't recommend this if you're going to uh, not modify it, like if you're just going to use it as is, you probably should get something different. But the problem is that these things, you either pay this low price, and all of the products are very similar in functionality and such, or you pay quite a bit more to get something that does the same job, just a little bit safer. But honestly, it doesn't feel like you need to do a lot of modifications, just a little bit of heat shrinking and running an extra wire to this plate. I think that's the most egregious thing is that this place, this plate is not grounded when it really ought to be. Any exposed metal on a uh, plug-in appliance should be grounded. So my version here is not, and yeah, I'm going to fix that at some point. For the moment, I'm not going to put my hands anywhere near this. Uh, on the bottom, the sides are fine, it's just this bottom plate. Now, if you would like to see a video of me doing these changes and how easily you can do them, let me know in the comments below. But for now, we're going to uh, turn this on and give it a shot. So the primary reason why I wanted this thing is actually for um, assistance in soldering on LEDs, but the most fun thing I wanted it for is for solder paste soldering. So here I have a few uh, resistors, as you can see on this practice board, um, with a solder paste application that's bad enough to make C on cry. I'm going to turn on this hot plate and see how long it takes. I'm going to put it to 295 and there it goes now.
So that was really cool to watch um, just from looking at the little resistors move around very slightly standpoint. Um, but yeah, it took about, uh, you know, about six minutes to get up to 295 degrees Celsius, which is pretty neat. Uh, but I do have some better equipment here. So let me show you the soldering process um, through the lens of a microscope. Um, this board is still ripping hot from uh, before, uh, or this plate I should say, uh, but the other use is to solder on these LEDs. You see these LEDs, they have an aluminum substrate, so when you put your iron onto these tiny little pads here and here, I know it's out of focus, but I gotta drop it on the hot surface, it just sucks all the heat away from your soldering iron. So in order to solder on these properly, I like the use of one of these boards, one of these uh, hot plates. And so the hot plate is actually off right now. I'm just going to turn it on, but it is still hot from before. Yeah, it's still at 220 right now. So I got my soldering iron here at uh, 330. And I'll show you, it's actually quite easy to get some solder float on. In fact, it might still already be a little liquid. So I'm just going to go touch this here, yeah, then you can just put a little bit of solder on and then you do the same thing with your wire. I mean, it's that simple. This little thing, it's not really that expensive, especially if you get it on sale, uh, can help you tremendously instead of wasting your time uh, soldering onto LEDs like this. And trust me, I have done that plenty in the past. So that's it. That's really what I want to cover. The two major use cases of this. This is still blazing hot, by the way. Um, so this is an uh, inexpensive heater, which you can use to do uh, service mount soldering. You can use this kind of thing, or you can go with a toaster oven approach. Um, or it can help you solder things like these uh, aluminum-backed LEDs. It's still quite hot from the previous shot. So. I'm most excited for starting to design PCBs for aluminum backed, uh, sub aluminum backed PCBs. And so LED based PCBs type thing. I've got some projects in my mind already, but basically this will let me do my first, uh, paste soldering. And I'm going to use, you know, kind of like the stencil and the squeegee method. And I'll try not to disappoint Sion while I do it. Also, you can see my LEDs up top there. They're flickering. I need to fix those at some point. So let me know what kind of stuff uh, you want to see me do with this. Let me know if you care about the video making this more safe. Um, if you guys don't care, I might do it just for Patreon. It'll be like a low, like, kind of low quality video. But if you do care, you know, I'll make sure that everyone gets to see it. Thanks for watching.